Hey divers, Alec Pierce again. Tech tips here at Dive Source in Whitby, Ontario, Canada. This is another little topic that I'm getting from your comments. Keep those comments coming. They're great because they, they give Kevin and I topics to, 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 to discuss here in our, in our YouTube videos. Number one. Secondly, we like to do the ones that you suggest because they obviously are appropriate. We're dealing with topics that you guys are, are looking at for answers for, or questions, you know, uh, important stuff, like what happens if you drop a scuba tank on a cement floor. We did that one a while ago, but anyway. So today we're going to talk just very, very briefly about air filtration. When you're a scuba diver, air quality is critical, very, very important, because if there is something in the air that might affect you physiologically, meaning, in other words, make you sick, it's not good for you, as you're walking around, when well, you start to scuba dive and the pressure increases, remember Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, as the pressure increases, then those possible problems are magnified greatly. So breathing uh, what you might consider good air at the surface would not be good air at 60 or 100 feet. Yeah, it's not good at all. Uh, so the point is that the air that goes into your scuba tank is pure breathing air. It is probably the cleanest air possible. Oh, there might be a medical grade that takes out another 10% of volume or something, but, but not likely. I think scuba diving air is probably the most common, top quality breathing air. Good for humans. That's what that means, breathing air. It's good for humans. You can breathe it anywhere, anytime. How do they get it to that point? Because the compressor is just a, it's, it's just an engine. It's, it's like a, it's like a four cylinder engine. It's got oil in it and it sucks air in from outside, usually through a long tube up on the roof. And often dive stores are in busy places. Dive source itself is in a mall on a fairly busy main street here in Whitby, Ontario. So it sucks the air in from outside. It's not necessarily great air. It's pretty good. It's not great. Think about a dive store in Miami. Think about a dive store in downtown Los Angeles. The air that they're drawing into the compressor is not necessarily good air. But the air that comes out of the compressor that goes into your scuba tank is perfect. It's pure. How do they do that? Well, first of all, we should really talk about what is the problem with air. And there are a number of things in ordinary air that you do not want as a scuba diver. Several things. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but there's a few of them. Number one, the most common one that people talk about is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is, is the, is the dangerous gas that is found in, 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 in any combustion. It's common, it is found in automotive exhaust. Yeah. And found in fires and lots of places like that. Carbon monoxide is deadly. Its very nature is such that it prevents the body from delivering oxygen, life giving, oxygen to the cells of the body. It stops that process. That's not good, right? So carbon monoxide is probably number one. Carbon dioxide is not all that good. Carbon dioxide won't kill you, but it will prevent you from living. It's not the same thing. No, anyway, whatever. <laughs> okay, so carbon dioxide should come out. Now, water? What's the problem with water? In fact, we have a humidifier at the ranch because it's very dry in the winter time and we heat with a wood stove the air is very dry we have a, we put water into the air so why is water bad well water isn't necessarily bad but you don't want much water if you're a scuba diver because that can affect the equipment other things too but too much water vapor in a scuba tank will actually cause the equipment the regulator and the valve that mechanical device to stop working properly. I don't want to use the word freeze up, but essentially that's what happens. So we want to remove the water as well. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and water. What else? Well, again, if you took a sample of the air standing in, in downtown Los Angeles, uh, you'd be finding a lot of other things in there too. There's all kinds of, of particles. Yeah, little particles, uh, junk, uh, bits of carbon, uh, other pieces of dust. You know, and so the stuff that you don't want that coming into your lungs, particularly when you're breathing at the bottom. And then there are what's called um, TVHC, total volatile hydrocarbons. That's not necessarily carbon monoxide. There are other things that also come out of com the combustion process. Certainly, standing on a highway in downtown Los Angeles, there are lots of things out there besides just carbon monoxide are bad for you. There's oil vapor, all kinds of things in there. And that's what is meant by TVHC, 
it measures and removes any volatile hydrocarbons. So essentially the air that comes out is oxygen and nitrogen. That's really it. Oh, there might be a tiny bit of argon, and maybe a little bit of some other obscure gases that are not dangerous, but essentially the air that's coming out of a cleaned air, cleaned air coming out of a compressor, is essentially oxygen, roughly 20%, and nitrogen, roughly 80%. Nothing else. Well, how do they do that? How do they do that? Well, they filter it. Well, yeah, that's the easiest thing to say. We're not talking about the oil filter, though. We're not talking about the filter that's above your, uh, above, uh, in, in the range hood over your stove. You know, the, the little metal aluminum things with lots of holes in it. So it's a much more sophisticated process than that. Let's deal, first of all, Kevin's going to put a picture up right now of what a compressor looks like. And if you take a look, you'll see on this compressor, you'll see along the bottom, you'll see a little tubes with fins on them. Yeah, there's a bunch of fins on them, like a radiator. And if you look towards the back, you'll see tubes, a whole bunch of tubes running around, around, around on each side of the compressor. What's all that about? Why don't you just run one straight tube? Well, there's a reason for that. You see, water vapor in the compressor, as the air is warmed up, water vapor is warmed up with it as well. And then as the air cools, that water vapor condenses and becomes water. So what they do is they take the air coming out of the first stage, the first pumping, if you like, and all these tubes. Because as that air goes into the tubes, the water in that air condenses. And then they have on the side of the compressor a special, uh, a special tap. So every once in a while that opens automatically and that air that's condensed comes out. It takes out water vapor, that's what it does. The same on the other side, between the other cylinders. And then those finned tubes in front takes out more and more water vapor. And then the air that's been compressed and has a lot of water taken out. Now it goes into a separator, what's called a separator. And it's a very special device that is does one thing only. It takes out vapors. It takes out water vapor, what's left. It takes out oil vapor, any kind of a vapor that's in there. Uh, after it comes out of the separator, there is no water, very little water, and no uh, uh, oil in there. Done. So now what happens? Well, now the air goes into the air filtration, the air purification tower. And that's this long tower. You can see the long tower there, Kevin. That's a picture. There's one long fill. The separator is about this long, uh, maybe 25 inches, okay? Four or five inches in diameter, full of marbles. No, they don't use marbles anymore. They use a, a special uh, filter in there, a bit like an oil filter with lots of particles. Uh, but the filtration, the, the purification filter is about three feet long. Yeah four or five inches in diameter. It has several things. First of all, <clears throat> it has an additional filter. Yeah, it's filled with material uh, that, that again, as, as the air goes through, it's very fine, not as big as a marble. Very, very, very fine. And it takes the last little bit of any particles or any water vapor or any, uh, any oil vapor. It takes that out. And then it goes into an activated charcoal section. It takes out gases. It sucks up the gases that are in there. Now, it doesn't suck up the oxygen or the nitrogen, interestingly enough, but it sucks up noxious gases and takes them away. So now we get rid of a lot of those bad gases we talked about. And then usually, there may be more stages, but then usually there's a final stage. And the final stage is really just a fairly fine fiber, often a fiber, they used to use cotton at one time, filter at the very top. And what that filter does is take out the very last little bit of any particles, it also stops the activated charcoal because activated charcoal with vibration and there's vibration with a compressor tends to break down and you get a black dust going through. It stops all of that. So now the air coming out of the top of the purification filter has had all the water removed at the compressor and then at the separator, has had all the oil vapor removed, some at the compressor, the rest at the separator. Now it's had the noxious gases, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and so on, those gases all removed. There's been a final filter to make sure the air is clean, and then you breathe it. Exactly. So it's really that simple. Next time you're in your dive store, speak to the dive store manager and say, hey, I was looking at Alec Pierce's video on YouTube the other day, and he was explaining to me how an air, can I take a look at your compressor? <laughs> I don't want to see, he was explaining to me. Show them, show them the picture, show them the video. Eh? They tell them to subscribe, but anyway, take a look. And you will see, it doesn't matter where the compressor is, or it doesn't matter what make, model, brand, it doesn't matter. You will see, almost invariably, you will see those tubes I mentioned between the cylinders. You'll see those finned 
tubes, tubes with fins on them like a radiator. Then you'll usually see a separator. Could be small, depending on the compressor, could be bigger. And then it goes into a usually a much longer air purifier, just as I described. And maybe, maybe ask, ask him, do you have a spare uh, purification uh, capsule, uh, 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 module? Because those, you take the top off, take the old off, put it new one in at the right time. Maybe he has one laying around. You can take a look at it. You can actually see the material. You can actually see the black activated charcoal and so on. It could be interesting. And it'll, it'll make, it'll impress the diaster owner too. This diver's pretty cool. He knows what he's talking about. Okay. And then here's pure. The dive store owner sends off a sample to, in this case, Trace Analytics, very, very big in Austin, Texas. Very, very big in checking dive air, make sure our dive air is in. And they come back with a report that says, yeah, carbon monoxide, less than 0 0.5. None. Oil is gone. No odor. I'm not supposed to smell. That's, that's kind of good. Uh, so this air is really, really good in the past. So anyway, there's some ideas on you on how your scuba air is made pure by your local dive store compressor. Go to talk to your dive store, take a peek at it, and this will make a lot more sense. I hope there's something in there for you, and thanks again for asking questions. We'll talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce and Kevin at Dive Source. <laughs> He's waving <laughs> at Dive Source here in Whippy, Ontario. Talk to you soon. Take care, guys.